Hello, my name is Dr. Patrick McGann, and I am an orthopedic uh, surgeon at Advanced Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. I am a board-certified orthopedic surgeon that specializes in sports medicine, especially arthroscopic surgery of the shoulder and the care of athletes. Today, we're going to be speaking about superior labral uh, tears. We'll start with a brief introduction, discuss the causes of injury and the symptoms, the physical examination, followed by tear classification, arthroscopic surgery, and recovery timeline. The shoulder joint is a ball and socket joint. It is composed of the scapula, the clavicle, and the humerus. The labrum is a cartilaginous ring that surrounds the glenoid. It deepens the socket by up to 50% and provides stabilization as well as an attachment site for the glenohumeral ligaments. Injury can occur to the superior labrum through several mechanisms. One is from acute trauma, such as falling on an outstretched arm, sustaining a traction injury, or a violent overhead reach, as in rock climbing. Superior labral tears can also occur with chronic degeneration with repetitive overhead motion, such as throwing a baseball, throwing a football, playing tennis, and swimming. This can also occur in overhead workers. Slap tears typically present with deep pain in the shoulder. There can be pain with overhead activity, as well as decreased range of motion and strength. On physical examination, there can be a positive O'Brien's test and a positive dynamic labral shear test. There are 10 different types of slap tears. However, the most common type of tear encountered is a type 2 slap tear, which is a tear of the biceps anchor. This is the tear that we will be speaking about today. This is a tear that is typically treated non-operatively, However, when non-operative management fails, operative treatment is the standard of care. When a patient presents with a slap tear, I typically start with conservative measures. This includes rest, physical therapy, activity modification, and either an intraarticular cortisone injection or PRP injection. With effective conservative care, up to 75% of patients can receive lasting pain relief. However, there is a subset of patients that will benefit from surgery. This includes patients less than 35 years of age with an acute slap tear. This also includes patients less than 35 years of age who have failed non-operative management. Patients who are over age 35 or have had symptoms for greater than one year, I consider performing an arthroscopic biceps tenodesis. This is a surgery that has been effective for treating chronic slap tears in patients over age 35 years. Arthroscopic slap repair is performed through several small incisions. It's an outpatient surgery where a patient comes and goes to the surgery center on the same day. Surgery is performed through small incisions using arthroscopic instruments. I perform anatomic reduction of the labrum and secure fixation with resorbable suture anchors. As with any surgery, there are potential risks. However, the overall risk of surgery is low, less than 5%. This includes infection, stiffness, nerve injury, persistence of symptoms, and recurrent tear in the future. Recovery, as I stated previously, is relatively straightforward. The surgery is a same-day surgery with patients coming and going the same day. We keep the arthroscopic incisions dry for three days, and then the bandages can be removed and simply replaced with band-aids. I typically start physical therapy one week after surgery in order to prevent stiffness. This is a physical therapy timeline. The first six weeks we have the patient wear a sling. We focus on regaining passive range of motion. At six weeks, the sling can be discontinued and we focus on active range of motion. Once active range of motion has been achieved at approximately three months post-op, we then begin a strengthening program. A strengthening program continues for approximately three to six months post-operatively. In the range of four to six months post-op, patients can return to sport-specific activities. However, it should be noted that patients can resume some cardio activity much earlier, such as the stationary bike two weeks postoperatively and jogging at six weeks postoperatively. This is arthroscopic footage of a slap repair I performed. This is a left shoulder viewed through a posterior viewing portal. I am using my shaver to debride the unhealthy tissue between the labrum and the glenoid. Now this is viewing the same shoulder from an anterior portal. As you can see, I use a suture passing instrument to pass the suture through the torn labrum. These procedures are all performed arthroscopically through three small incisions. 
Once the suture has been passed through the labrum, I then use a retriever to retrieve the suture. I then use a shuttling technique to shuttle high strength suture, which is called fiber wire, uh, through the labrum. This essentially secures a knot around the labrum so that I can control the labral tissue. This is viewing the same shoulder once again from a posterior viewing portal. The white piece of plastic that you see is part of the uh, suture anchor which will fix the labrum. This once again is inserted through a very uh, small incision. The labrum has been secured with a high strength uh, suture which is then attached to the suture anchor. The suture anchor is then gently malleted After the anchor is malleted down, I then use an arthroscopic scissors to cut the excess uh, suture. This is once again demonstrating a second anchor being placed uh, with the suture attached. Typically for a superior labral repair, I fix the labrum with two to three suture anchors, thus completing the repair. This is our final labral repair, which you can see is two suture anchors nicely securing the labrum to the bone. Again, this is the final repair as viewed from an anterior portal. You can see that the labrum is now firmly reattached to the bone and the humeral head is nicely centered on the glenoid, thus accomplishing an anatomic repair. So in summary, arthroscopic superior labral repair is a safe and effective procedure. In patients with a superior labral tear, I typically start with non-operative management. However, when conservative management fails, arthroscopic slap repair can be an effective means of recovery. At the time of surgery, all concomitant injuries are addressed. The labrum is firmly repaired to the glenoid with bioresorbable suture anchors. The recovery process requires active patient engagement in a four to six month recovery can be expected. Further information can be found on the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgery website. Thank you.